So what is going on guys, NandoPan73 here and welcome to part one of, par of three parts of a new little series that I wanted to do for you guys. I'm gonna have these videos pretty much back to back to back, maybe one or two videos in between, but we're doing top 15 hidden iPadOS features, October 2019 edition. So I'm gonna hop right into it and kind of give you guys the first five of those 15. And some of these you might have seen, some of these might be new. If you guys find one of them that's new, then my goal is complete. That's exactly what I wanted you guys to see. So I'm gonna pretty much order these in the order that I use them most often. So I'm gonna start right off with the Control Center. So Control Center got revamped probably two, three years ago to give you this nice little layout. Definitely took it from the Android side, but I'm all for it. But now with haptic touch, you have, you used to be able to just, you know, hold long press there or 3D touch, whatever device you were using and get all these options laid out a little bit better. But now if you long press on the Wi-Fi, you get a menu of all the different Wi-Fi networks in the area. You can just click out. Same with the Bluetooth. So any Bluetooth thing, any Bluetooth devices you're currently connected to or are in the area that you want to connect to, you can just access straight from Control Center. And if that's not enough, then you, there's a button to jump right into the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi settings. The long press option is available for a lot of these apps, right? So for instance, Brightness, if you click on the brightness long press, you have dark mode, night shift on and off, true tone, volume, it shows that you're on the iPad. If I had Bluetooth or if I had AirPods, it would show the AirPod logos there. So Control Center has got a couple of new features. You just have to know how to access them. Another one which I don't really need to show you is that this is more for iPhone or if you're an iPad with a cellular version, you can have download apps that are over 200 megabytes with data. Before there used to be a cap. So if it was at 200 megabytes, you needed to wait. So you got home, you got to a Starbucks to connect to the Wi-Fi, even though sometimes your data is faster than the Wi-Fi, which is amazing nowadays. But now there's no limit. It'll just prompt you, hey, this is 200 megabytes. So just in case you're not on unlimited data, just so you know, this is 200 megabytes. Do you still want to continue to download it? You get the little prompt, you hit OK, and you're downloading on data. Another thing that I actually noticed by myself was there's a new low data mode when it comes to, you know, your Wi-Fi. And this is really helpful when you're hotspotting. So, I use T-Mobile, I have unlimited data on my cell phone, and that comes with five gigabytes of tethering slash hotspot data. So for instance, if I'm, in a, if I'm in a pinch and I really need to get on my iPad and use the internet on there, but I'm not near Wi-Fi, I'll just hotspot my phone, and the mode that it sets it to automatically is low data mode, which all it means is that it's trying not to use any data. It's not only for hotspotting, you can do this when you're on regular Wi-Fi or any other Wi-Fi. It's just, first of all, it's better for battery consumption and it's better for data utilization. So like I said, I'm on T-Mobile, I have a limit of hotspot data. So turn low data power, low data mode on, and then automatically it'll start pulling less. It'll only take the data that's necessary to, you know, load up that website or load up that YouTube video, etc. So that's, that's new to iOS 13. Nice little hidden feature. I think it's really useful. Let's move on to the next one. Another big one, which I really like, especially for work purposes, this only works with Safari currently and the native Apple apps. You can't do this with Chrome. So if you take a screenshot, and like I said, this only works for Safari, right? You now have the option to go full page mode. So if you full page mode it, that means you have access to the entire website and whatever is on that entire page. You can mark up from, you know, we can mark up down here. You can say, hey, look at, look at Joe Burrow on LSU. You know, that's awesome. Keep scrolling through. Oh, Kemba Walker, take a look at that, right? Like subscribe, all that good stuff. And then it sends it as a full formatted PDF, which is really, really nice, especially for collaboration. And if you wanna show more than one thing and it doesn't fit on the screen, this is an awesome little tweak tool that I do think I've been using it a lot, which I do think a lot of people will get use out of. I'm just gonna delete this one, but as you guys can see, save PDF to files. And then last but not least for number five in part one, it is emojis, right? And not animojis, emojis in general, it's emojis within contacts. So right here, I got my grandpa. You can now edit their profile picture. Yeah, you can pick a picture, but you can also create an emoji for him and just go through the whole process, make something funny, something cool. You can make him a giraffe if you want, you know, use any of the predetermined ones, which is really, really nice. And it just gives you a nice little custom touch to whenever, you know, my grandpa hits me up on FaceTime or he gives me a call. I could just change it, make him look kind of funny, the old man. And it's a nice little touch and I have used this a decent amount. So those are the first five things in my three part series for top 15 hidden iOS features and iPad OS features for October, 2019. Hopefully we'll get some cool new ones, but until now, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, definitely subscribe. If you want to see the next two, 
parts because there are some nice ones that I do think a lot of people will get some usability out of. But that's going to do it for now. So don't forget, again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, peace.